Hello everyone and welcome to the good old gamer. So over on the discord, we've had a pretty interesting discussion throughout the day and I figured I can make a pretty quick video on this. And it's in relation to the stuttering effect of video games. And this has become more prevalent in modern games as frame time hits, 1% lows are just getting hammered and people just aren't having the smooth experience that they're wanting. There are ways to go ahead and fix this, and that's what I'm going to show you here today. So let's go ahead and check out a few games and what I do to smooth out my experience so this way I get the optimal gaming experience. So I'm going to be showing you this with an NVIDIA graphics card, an RTX 3080, but the same rules apply for AMD graphics cards as well. So the first thing I recommend doing is go into the control panel, and what I do is on the global settings is I go ahead and set VSync to on. Now, a lot of people be like, I don't want my VSync on. You know, what if a game's running slower or whatever? If you have a VRR display, so variable refresh rate display, it doesn't matter as long as you're below your frame rate. So for example, I'm using the LG C2 OLED. This goes up to 120 uh, Hertz. So up to 120 FPS, the VRR or G-Sync kicks in. And then when we go ahead and uh, hit that, it will lock at that 120 FPS, which you do need if you want to have a solid experience. The next thing you're going to want to make sure that you have is MSI Afterburner, or at the very least, Revituner st uh, Statistics Server. It is a mouthful saying that. Uh, the main reason why is you can go ahead and lock frame rate in here, and this is better than locking VSync and all the rest of that through drivers or in the game and I will show you the difference uh, in a game and just here in a sec. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna test this out in a couple of games. We're gonna be kicking things off with Halo Reach in the Master Chief Collection. If you take a look at that frame time graph, you can see that it's kinda bouncing around a bit. It's a little bit jittery. Remember, we do have uh, VSync enabled in the NVIDIA driver. So even though it is capped at the 120 FPS, we're still getting a lot of frame time jitter as you can see there so if you wanted to go ahead and smooth this out how do you do that well let's go jump over to Reva Tuner statistics server so we're just going to use the global you can set it on a per game basis as you can see I have rise in there but we're just going to set that to 120 and see how this affects things so jumping back on over to halo you can see that frame time graph is now virtually flat you'll see a little bit uh, here and there, but it is significantly better than it was before. And this is going to be delivering basically a perfect gaming experience, or assuming your hardware is fast enough, a perfect gaming experience uh, to you delivering properly paced frames. So yeah, that's uh, one good example of that. We're going to go ahead and check out a couple of other games here and see how it works in those. All right, so next up is Rise, Son of Rome. Uh, as you can see, that frame time graph is bouncing around even a bit more than we saw in Halo. And honestly, playing like this is, well, kind of impossible. Now, there are, is a way to go ahead and get the game running at 120 FPS. You got to kind of finagle it, but on modern systems, it's just kind of annoying. Uh, so we're just looking at the 60 FPS or whatever the game does naturally. And as you can see that it's not even doing 60, it's trying to bounce around like 65 or something. So if we go up into the settings here and we take a look at the graphics, we can see that full screen is on, VSync is enabled, and FPS lock is enabled. And obviously that is not the experience that we are getting. And it just doesn't look very good. And in my opinion, it's kind of unplayable like this. So let's jump over to RTSS. All right, as I already have Rise in here, we're just going to do that. And we're just going to lock this game to 60 and see how that works. And there we go. So just like in Halo, we had kind of a juttery mess in terms of frame times. Now we have a perfectly smooth and playable experience. And I'm going to jump on down here and we're going to go ahead and do some fighting. Oh. See, so obviously shaders weren't quite cached for this. Um, a little bit hard to play while you're talking, but <laughs> I don't know how streamers do this. Uh, anyways, so this is uh, obviously a way better experience than, you know, just running the game, even with its own uh, V-Sync or even with the driver V-Sync enabled. And yeah, this is just a much smoother, cleaner experience 
uh, than we were getting just a few minutes ago. This is playable. Now, it's more playable if you can get it running at the 120 FPS. Like I said, it is a little annoying. Um, I believe it was a Windows update that kind of knocked that out. Just go to PC Gaming Wiki. Uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. Supposedly, running Shadow Play will do it, but I tried that and it, it didn't work. So sometimes you got to like all tab in and out. I don't know. Some of these Crytek games, it's just a little weird. But anyways, even at 60, the game's pretty good. Um, but this is how you should be running the game. All right, so next up, we're going to be taking a look at Ratchet and Clank. I was trying to do Hogwarts, but for some reason, it just wouldn't capture right with OBS. Um, so anyways, as you can see here, look at that frame time graph. It's kind of all over the place. Now, granted, this is not V-Synced. So let's just go ahead and see how that works in this particular game. Okay, so VSync is now set. Obviously, we're not hitting 120 FPS uh, with these particular settings. So, yeah, it's trying to, it's just basically running unlocked. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we throw this down to a locked 60. And then, once again, you see that clears up our frame time issues. Now, how do you determine what frame rate should you target? You know, it's like, okay, Chris, you're just picking some arbitrary numbers out of thin air. Um, so how, how would you figure that out? Like what frame rate should you try to lock to? And I'm so glad you asked. If you guys are familiar with my benchmarks, I focus on the 1% lows of the graphics cards and CPUs that I test. And the reason for this is this tells you around where you should be locking your frame rate. Now, granted, this is like overall an average, but you just pick whatever game it, that you're playing and just kind of see like what the lowest frame rate you typically see pop up. And that's around where you should be capping your frames. So as an example, here we go. Let's look at just like Cyberpunk, for example. And let's say you have like a 2080 Ti. So if you're gaming at 1080p, somewhere around 100 FPS would be a good way to go. Um, at 1440p, somewhere is around 70, maybe 75. And then at 4K, you probably want to stick around 40 FPS, depending on whether or not that's in your VRR range. You don't want to go lower than your VRR range. And then the same thing here with Crisis Remastered. You just kind of look at the 1% lows. Now, of course, not everybody's just going to benchmark every game that they ever play. So what you do is you just turn on uh, Afterburner like I did in the game. And you just kind of see like where like kind of the bottom number lands. So if you're like ah, in this area, it's a little bit tougher. Let's say it's around 80 or 70 FPS, but most of the game's around 100, 120. Well, if you want it to have that nice flat line, you're going to want to limit even those 100 areas down to around that 80. Or what you could do is stay around where you're kind of averaging. That'll smooth things out a bit, but when you do get to those trouble areas, you are going to have frame time hits. So it's really up to you, and it, there is some trial and error there, assuming you have a VRR display. For you guys that are like, what's VRR? That's your G-Sync or FreeSync. Now, if uh, you don't have a VRR display, number one, I'm going to put some affiliate links down below. You should probably just get one. At this point in time, it's just going to make your experience so much better. But if you're stuck with like V-Sync, V-Sync, you pretty much have 60 hertz, 120 hertz, you know, whatever your frame rate is or your uh, refresh rate is on your monitor. Uh, those are kind of your only real options is some sort of, variable in there so locking all games to like 60 or 120 120 is probably not too bad for single player games uh but 60 for a lot of pc gamers today just isn't very good so having a vrr display means that you can actually lock the game where the game actually runs on your hardware and you get a substantially smoother and better gaming experience so for a lot of these games out there that just don't seem to run very well hogwarts would have been a perfect example in hogsmeade no matter what hardware you have if you run uncapped you're going to have a lot of jitter in your frame time however if you cap at 60 with a pretty powerful system it's going to run almost perfectly. Even, even uh, that game, no matter what hardware you have, it's still going to be a little bit more jittery than the other games, but it's significantly better. Even on an i3-12100 with an RTX 3060, I'm able to get uh, locked 60 FPS pretty much in that area. Just like I said, a little bit of jitter. And uh, so 
most people should be able to have a very enjoyable experience with that game going that way. If you are having those big frame time ups and downs, that just leads to a poor gaming experience. So hopefully this helped you out. This is the way I recommend all single player games be ran. Um, for me personally, I just set a global 120. Um, most, you know, older games and stuff have no problems with modern hardware hitting 120 FPS. So that works pretty good for like 99% of the games, but newer games that are more demanding, for example, Ratchet and Clank there, with the settings that I had set, I would need to go with something like a 60, maybe a 70 FPS, but you saw even, there was a little bit of jitter there, wasn't too bad, so maybe we can go a smidge higher. There is a little bit of trial and error if you want to get like the perfect number, but in reality, the way that I like to do it is you start at 60, go to 90, 120, basically 30 hertz increments, and just find the one that seems to work best for you, but it's up to you whichever way you want to go, but this is how you get the most optimal gaming experience in PC games here today, and this works for things like emulation as well. So if you're running RPCS3 or Xenia, you wanna lock those down as well, and you will get a smoother experience using RTSS. So hopefully this helped you out. Hopefully you guys do get a better experience. You might not need that mega PC upgrade that you were thinking. Maybe your hardware will work, tweak some settings, and lock your frame rate. Uncapped frame rates only belong in competitive gaming. For single player gaming, always have locked frame rates in my opinion but hey to each their own hopefully this helps some of you guys out if you like this video please smash that like button please share this one around i think that this is very helpful um i think a lot of guys in my own community this will be helpful for them and hopefully for some other people out there and hopefully they'll join our community as well and we can just Keep learning and having fun together. And if you're interested in joining the community and supporting the channel, you can do so by clicking the little join button down below or becoming a Patreon member. Links are in the description. If you want to pick up any of the games or anything like that, affiliate links are down below, which also do help support the channel. So thank you so much, guys. Hope you have a great day, and I will catch you guys in the next video.